Hi everyone. Uh, today out here in the vineyard, it's May 30th, uh, 2020. I uh, want to talk a little bit about early season canopy management. And I'm going to talk a bit about canopy management in a series of videos uh, throughout the summer. I would say this practice that I'm about to show is probably the most important. And that some people might differ with me on that. Some people might say posture positioning or combing uh, is more important. But I think that if you get this done now, um, it, your life is going to be so much easier later in the summer trying to do the or when you're doing um, the other uh, uh, practices that you that you do in the vineyard so what we're going to do here is shoot thin okay so we look at this vid this this particular vine this is a front neck it's an older vine it's uh 15 years old you know look at that nice big sturdy trunk on it um and what we've got what i'm aiming for is to thin out the number of shoots that are inside this uh, zone, in this fruiting zone. You know, a grapevine has got a certain amount of root system, uh, and that root system can support a certain amount of growth up top. And if we think about grapes in the Northeast or in North America, particularly in the Northeast, uh, they really are, are weeds. And, they're, they're, and when I say weeds, I mean that they are very competitive um, they can be very vigorous, you know, they can really dominate, kind of take over uh, parts of the landscape. And I'll just flip over here and show you, I've got an orchard just across the drive from here, and grapes are one of my biggest weed problems in the orchard. If you imagine an apple tree, it provides a perfect trellis uh, for wild grapes to grow on, and it'll just grow right up into the tree and choke it out. Um, but what we want to do when we take this, this grape and we train it out, you know, we, we take the plastic growth habit, which means that we can basically move this plant and put it wherever we want on a, a you know, three-dimensional area. We've spread this out. We've selected for certain uh, characteristics, you know, fruit characteristics that we're looking for. And um, now we want to manage this so that we get optimum fruit quality and not just maximum fruit quantity. Uh, and to do that, we want to ensure that the fruit that are on the vine are ideally as uh, consistent in size and maturity as possible. Uh, that they are well spaced and especially so that when we come through and do our um, shoot positioning in another month or so, five, five, five weeks or so, um, it's so much easier to do because we have a lot fewer shoots that are kind of in the way. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and do some shoot thinning in here. One of the reasons why this period, like right about now, we've got these maybe five inch shoots. Um, one of the reasons why this is a good time to do this is, well, I'll say two of the reasons. Uh, number one, if we get this growth off now, life is gonna be much easier um, then if we let it grow and make it more difficult uh, to remove because there may be tangled up or more importantly the bases are starting to get woody we can now pop these off you know just with our fingers I don't even have any pruners on me I kind of wish I did because there's a few few spots I wish that, that I could cut but that's all right um, but yeah we can just pop these off with our fingers so it's much easier you can fly through the vineyard very quickly as opposed to later on when you've got to be cutting and kind of whacking away at every one of them um, the other reason is the one of the main points of this is to improve the growth of the shoots we leave so the shoots we leave are more important than the shoots we take off and the earlier we do that the less energy gets wasted essentially on shoots that we're not going to keep in the vineyard. Uh, so this is a good time to, to pull those off. So what we aim for is a distribution of shoots of maybe three to five shoots per foot of canopy. So let's say this is about a foot uh, and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's call it ten there um, just in that zone. So double the number of shoots that we're looking for. So that's not ideal. Um, and then something we want to look for, and I'm going to find a good example in here. Um, let's see. One thing we look for when we decide, remember I said 
it's just just as important in terms of what we keep as what we pull off. Um, we want to be sure to, to keep, if we can, primary buds, right? And maybe I'll have to jump to another vine to, 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 to show this. Um, gonna go down past the Coro Noir. I'll hop over to these Marquettes um, because I'm pretty sure we've got some in here that we can see. Um, as 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 most people who view this video might know and those who don't I'll, I'll just inform you now every grape bud has got three buds in it right there's three buds uh inside of a, of a bud a primary a secondary and a tertiary the primary is the most vigorous bud um the secondary is the next most vigorous and the tertiary generally doesn't have doesn't produce any fruit and it only comes out uh if the vine needs to um uh um basically keep some growth going because the other two were damaged by either cold damage frost some kind of uh, event like that um gosh i'm not finding it so oftentimes ideally the primary will be what emerges and um and usually on many vines, if, if the primary bud emerges, it suppresses, here we go, it suppresses the secondary bud, but not always. So here we have a primary and a secondary. And if I keep both of those shoots, this one is always going to be delayed, right? It'll have, be less fruitful. When it is fruitful, the ripening is gonna be, you know, quite a ways off. Um, so when I do come through and shoot thin this, I can do it right now, you know, I'll keep this primary, but I'll pull off the secondary. So that's a key thing to, to recognize. Um, also, as we walk down through here, we can see we're starting to get some grape tumid gall maker coming in here. So I might have to treat for that uh, next time we spray. This is also an ideal time to start spraying the orchard or the vineyard. Um, look at that grape tumid gall maker on the, on the shoots. Um, okay, so I'm gonna walk back over to those front knacks that I was working on because I know they're nice and vigorous. Give you a little walking tour of the vineyard. So I'm back to that original vine with my 10 shoots. So this is where I do wish I had my pruners because one thing I would do is I would trim this back to um, to this little, you know, to, to, re to shorten this spur and keep this. Why don't I walk over to the Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause right now. I'll be back in a minute, and I will um, I'll get my pruners, and uh, that way I can trim these up better. Okay, we're back at this front neck vine. At my pruners, uh, and I just want to show within this zone. I decided I want to take out about half of the shoots, right? And so in some cases, I want to shorten up the spur, right? So I'm gonna take this off. That makes leaves me a nice shorter spur whereas if i kept the other one eventually my spurs wind up getting four or five inches long and it gets to be kind of difficult to manage in here i want to take off this kind of runty piece and again shorten up my spur okay this one's runty so i don't want to keep this one so i will keep the one that's further out on the spur uh this is a basil bud comes out of the base of the spur uh i think i'll keep that for now same thing here, I'm gonna shorten up my spur. Shorten up all these spurs basically, and that's enough. So I got one, two, three, four, five, if I call that a foot. So that's not bad. That's a lot better than it was before. Um, another thing you can see, and this is something we've been guilty of for, here at the UVM Vineyard for years, and it sort of took a different mindset. We used to leave fairly long spurs because we were we were timid and we we were worried that uh, we'd get cold damage. And what happens if the if the the spur you know, the buds lower down the spur don't don't push uh, shoots? Um, and then we realized that we were just making a lot of extra work for ourselves. So if we'd actually left a shorter spur uh, going into the winter probably would have been fine so if in an ideal world you know what the what the weather is going to be like you don't have wind damage so we've we've potentially got some wind breakage just from the winds you're seeing right now um 
which could break some things off. Um, you know, we could potentially prune down to the number of spurs we want, which is that, you know, three to five per foot. And this is a vigorous front neck vine, so I'm gonna leave five. Um, I don't want three on this. On a less vigorous, something like a, like a Coro Noir over here, um, you know, this is a vine that I would try to trim it down to about three per foot. Um, just to try to get some some more vigor out of that but on this front neck you know this right here is kind of what I'm looking for now one thing that often happens this right here is the head of the vine right you can see we got two trunks in this zone you know there's been a lot of cutting that's, that's happened over the years this is a 15 year old trunk it's probably time to renew the trunk um, what we've what we would do is each time you're cutting these these uh making these cuts you're, you're kind of prompting these adventitious buds around the the head and you get all this extra little small shoot growth and that's not very useful but you want to keep a few shoots so that you can renew and make next year's canes or cordons or how depending on how you want to prune so i'll thin these out i won't take everything off but you really got to keep this head kind of cleaned out to some degree so it doesn't get choked in. Okay. That head's quite a lot thin, more thinned out. I'm gonna take off this one. I probably should have trimmed off this one instead because I'm trying to remember, I'm trying to shorten up my spurs. And another thing that's helpful is to try to select for shoots that you're gonna be able to easily train down. This is a high wire cordon system. You know, it's about five feet high and we train the shoots down doesn't mean that shoots need to be pointing down in fact most of these varieties they they you know at some point they start to go up but um if they're kind of at odd angles uh in the in the in the canopy it gets a little bit tougher to move them so sometimes that's one thing to kind of keep an eye out for a lot of excess growth down here we don't need any of that stuff keep this nice and clean right this small shoot i don't need Okay, and I'll need to figure out what to do with this cane. I think this cane we're going to um, turn into next year's cordon. So we'll grow it out um, for now. I might defruit it, come through a little bit later and defruit it, I'm not sure. Um, but eventually these, these cordons are getting pretty old uh, and you can get you know a lot of carryover of disease onto your cordon. So, We'll think about, um, and we already have, you can see in places like further down the row, you can see where we've started, you know, to renew our cordon. This was a cane. Um, this year we, we cut off the old cordon and we're, we're training a new cane over to, to get some, same thing here, um, you know, to get some younger, more fruitful, more vigorous wood in there that carries less potential disease pressure. Same thing here, if you get that out on the spread that on the wire and you can see see what we were doing there um, so we can look a little bit at cane versus cordon pruning I'll go back down in here and this still relates back to uh, what I'm getting at with the whole point here is talking about shoot thinning this was a cane last year last year this this cordon it's a cordon because it's two years old now which means it's got spurs this is one year old like last year and these are next year's spurs um, and it doesn't matter if you use spurs which might produce a couple of shoots off or a cane right cane is you can get the same number of shoots from the cane you know three to five per foot as you can from the cordon right so it's two different systems um, you know the jury's not necessarily out yet with these new varieties uh new new ish i mean front necks 25 years old but uh in terms of which way to go a lot of people go and i kind of prefer once you once you get it set up i i like to go with a spur pruning system um it's just easier to to manage but you've got to be ready to renew things so we've started renewing oh, a few years now we've been renewing this vineyard so that's my tale for today um shoot thinning and you know again really important practice um do it earlier if you can do it um you know 
efficiently, which means it doesn't take much time right now to kind of knock this out. Um, and that will make life a lot easier when you move forward. Thanks.